Um, uh, I, my name's John, John Pike. I'm, a, I'm a, a philosopher based at the Open University, uh, one of several. Um, and uh, it's a privilege to be on this panel, obviously, um, for me. And I, obviously, I want to uh, flag that up. Um, everyone at the conference has been doing the I'm a first-time delegate and I'm terrified thing. Um, I am, um, and I am terrified. Uh, but I'm also a bit long in the tooth in the Labour Party because I was recruited to the East Surrey Labour Party Socialists by a chap called Keir Starmer in 1981. Um, and I like and admire Keir. Uh, he's an old comrade. I have some major disagreements with him, but I wish him well. And I know that some people here will think differently, but I think it's important to say that the people who support what you might call a gender critical position in the party come all from all wings of the party, all parts of the party. And we are, you know, going to argue this one out. We're going to argue this one out with Keir um, when he starts to listen. Um, so I want to talk about sport in general, then women's sport in particular, and then fairness, and then I want to talk about blokes, I'm afraid. Um, in this town, uh, like many others, there are tens of thousands of people who, uh, whose re weekly rhythms uh, were to sport. I mean, we're all here at a, at a political meeting. There are thousands of people here on their way to track or to training, giving um, up their time on a wet Tuesday night in October. Um, they coach, they organise minibuses, they train, their weekends are filled with the match or the race that they have coming up. This is the town of Steve Ovet and Sally Gunnell. Uh, sport is a lot of things. One thing is it is a break from the grind of work. Sport makes real some of the abstract values that we talk about. Values like mutual aid, mutualism, contribution, putting back in after taking out. And sport makes sense of fairness. Fairness is a labor value. We are, we should be, opposed to people who try to rig the rules to their own advantage whether that applies to the tax system, or the welfare state, or the playing field. So to women's sport. Women's sport is young. Women's weightlifting uh, was only... Uh, women's weightlifting, well there's a thing. But women's weightlifting was only recognised as an Olympic sport in the year 2000. It's a young sport, women's weightlifting. Why so late? Well, there were two main planks of opposition and perhaps you'll recognize them to the incorporation of, to, 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 to the acceptance of women in sport. The first was pseudoscience. We were told that because of their bodies, because of female bodies, this is through the late 19th and early 20th century, because of menstruation or brittle bones or dodgy joints or one thing or another, women just weren't up to competitive sport. But the left should have no time for pseudoscience, for climate change denial, for anti-vaxxism, for ludicrous stats about autism and MMR. We should have the same approach to sex denial, to biology denial. <laughs> denial, denial of the fact that there are only two sexes and the fact that no one can actually change sex. We should have the same approach as we have to, to other sorts of pseudoscience. I don't mean in the fashionable um, way that science denial has no place in our party. No, it's fine. If you want to believe that you're being injected with microchips at the behest of Bill Gates, then I'm not in favour of you being expelled from the Labour Party. If you want to believe, contrary to scientific knowledge, that there are five sexes, then you've been had. You've been had by Fausto Sterling. And you should have no influence on our policy or our manifesto. So that's plank one of the anti-women anti in sport thing. The second is this. It's the idea that competitive sport is unfeminine. 
It's not a female virtue. Maybe you think this one has gone away. Maybe you think that's ancient history. But look at the arguments presented for trans inclusion. They make an argument about numbers. They say, oh look, there are only four trans people in, in, in Tokyo. Only Rachel McKinnon has won the world championship. What's all the fuss about? There's only a handful. Now, I don't know what the level of trans women will be in women's sport going forward. Kathy has more to say about that. But think what is being said here. It's another version of don't hoard your rights. <laughs> let, let the male-bodied people in. Be kind. Don't be competitive. Budge up. There's a good girl. It's only girl sport after all. No, so I want to be clear about who should do the budging up. It's us. It's men. <laughs> we should be kind. We, sorry, we should be kind. Now, apparently there's a demonstration outside that says trans women should be in sport. Trans women are entitled to be in sport. I absolutely agree. It's completely right. I agree that trans rights are human rights. Let's work out what their content is, but of course trans rights are human rights. We're not denying anyone's existence here. That's nonsense. We know that's nonsense. It is our job as men to welcome trans women into our clubs, open teams, open categories, categories without a gender identifier, because it doesn't matter, right, for male sport, for, for an open category, and leave women's sport for female people who do not have the physiological advantages of male puberty. Straightforward. So, Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Stop. I'm sorry. No. Okay. No. Oh, uh, okay. Right. I'll, I'll, I'm sorry. Too long. Sentence. Right. Four things that blokes need to do. Can I say what these four things? Right. One. Listen to women in every CLP who will be bending your ear about this. Every CLP. Two blokes, read. Read Julie Bindle, read Kathleen Stock, read Helen Joyce, do the homework. Don't look as dumb as my students who don't do the reading before a tutorial. When you go on the, on the radio and you're asked, do only women have a cervix? Think. Think critically about what you are told. And the last one, the last message, Kathleen Stock got this right. It's, it's, it's embarrassing for me, but you don't need complicated philosophical thought on this. You just need guts. Right? Men in the Labour Party, listen, read, think, and show some guts. Thank you.